Boy, legs sure do suck. Hey gang, it's Will from Tested. And it's Nord from Tested. Will's riding an electric unicycle. It is an electric unicycle. This is the Focus Designs SBU. It stands for Self-Balancing Unicycle. I've been testing it for about the last month. Wow. Uh, how does it work? Um, it is a gyroscopically stabilized unicycle. So what that means is uh, there's a gyroscope in here somewhere that stabilizes it front to back, but not side to side. So you're maintaining balance side to side. Just like on a traditional unicycle. But, but instead it, of the pedaling. Yes. Ah. It, it just, when, you, when the power's on, it stays level. You can't make it not level. So the, the interesting thing about this is that the forward and back balance is the tricky part of riding a unicycle. Side to side, once you get going, just like with a bicycle, once you get up to speed, it just kind of works itself out, assuming you're the slightest bit coordinated. And then I assume there's a motor, electric motor in I here. I think actually the motor's in the wheel. It's a hub, it's a hub motor like you would find on an electric assist bicycle. Um, and then this is battery and electronics and all that kind of stuff. And you go for how long with this? Uh, about 10 miles is the range that they claim. I have not actually yet ridden it for 10 miles <laughs> in one charge. Right. Um, that, and that is a long way to go on, on this thing. Because it is, while the seat's more comfortable than a traditional unicycle, it is not something you want to be on for, say, an hour or so, which is what it would take to go 12 miles. Pushing up on your crotch. It is uh, uncomfortable in the prostate region. And also it's heavy. 27 pounds. Yeah, I'm not going to walk around with this. No, you don't. You want to ride it. If yeah. you're if you're bringing this with you, you want to be going on your own power. All right. So how do you mount it? Um, so basically, you you kind of get like this, and then you hit the power button, and it rolls up underneath you. Okay. It's important to get your bait and tackle kind of situated right. The I'm sure the uh, the, uh, the the pedals rest. fold up. Oh, they do. Okay, good. Yeah. So, so you, you can want put to put this in the back of a car. You can put it in the back of the car. They they sell a backpack that you can strap it into like a giant fire axe. Oh my god. That's unnecessary. Um, and then. But so. So then basically you just put your feet on the pedals. Never hold the hand, hand, never hold the seat. If you hold the seat, you're gonna die basically. You keep your hands out to the side and you just kind of take off. Stumble, stumble. Don't die, oh my goodness. Looks easy enough. Uh, um, how long did it take for you to learn that? So uh, I did it uh, basically the same way I learned to ride a unicycle and all that stuff. I did it for as long as my ass could take for multiple days in a row. So probably 10, 20 minutes at a time. There was a lot of kind of taking off, rolling forward three or four feet, and then kind of going out of control and stopping. Uh, I did crash once or twice. Um, as with any gyroscopically stabilized stuff, like if you ask George W. Bush about segways and crashing, mm -hmm. as soon as the wheel leaves the ground, it kind of flips Whoa, out. Oh, jeebus. As it That's tries to stabilize, terrifying. and like eventually it realizes you've had a crash and just turns off. Right. Okay. Um, it's pretty good at that. Like once once it was off sideways, it just the wheel stops spinning, and you have to turn it on and off again, and it'll be back to. And if you feel unstable, itself. you can just step off. Yeah. The worst case, if you still feel unstable, is just grab the seat and step back. Okay. Um, the thing you want to avoid doing at all costs is stepping forwards, because when these aluminum pedals hit your ankles, it really, really hurts. Like I, I have road rash on my ankles from from, scab, from stabbing it with the with the foot pedals. It's not comfortable. So, so to answer your question, after about three days of doing that for 20 or 30 minutes a day, uh, I was able to competently go in a straight line to the point that my backyard was no longer big enough for me to practice in. Because wow. uh, the top speed on this is about 12 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So you get going really quick. I have a small backyard. The amount of patio I have back there is about 25, 30 feet. So I would get up to speed and then I'd be at the end of the patio and have to stop. That's um, pretty fast. It's pretty fast. Yeah. After three days of that, I took it to a parking lot near my house and was able to kind of noodle around until I was able to do like light turns and do kind of like a two point turn where you take one foot off and like just pivot. And then after another two or three weeks of that, I felt like I was comp competent to ride on the sidewalk where there's people that could laugh at me when I wiped out. Um, it's a learning curve. It's a learning curve, but it wasn't, by the end of a month, if you do it every day, you'll be able to do turns and stuff like that and you'll, I don't know if you'll look, did I look cool? Did I look graceful? Did I look a little bit graceful? Did I look like I knew what I was doing? Yes, okay. confident. You look confident. confident. All right, yes. so because it's motorized, uh, I presume you can go up hills as well. You can go up hills. They say that you can do about a 30% grade. I can go up the ramp here if you want. Yes, please do. Oh boy. He's powered by his own sense of self-satisfaction. I'll come back down, and it breaks for you as you come back down. It accelerates as you go up. And so when it's braking, I presume that's some type of regenerative braking as well. Yeah, it does regenerative braking. 
Um, the battery lasts long enough that you're never going to run the battery out if you charge it once or twice a week. So my commute from the parking garage to the office is about a quarter of a mile each way. I do that every day with the unicycle. Um, I charge once a week more if I go out and ride after work or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about it is it's surprisingly fun. Like it's, it's um, like the boosted board, once you kind of get the mechanics down on it, it just feels like you're going by thinking instead of by doing stuff. Yeah. And that's a surprising, it's a really pleasant, pleasant feeling. Like you just kind of glide and turn. I can weave between pedestrians on the sidewalk now. Subtle motions, um, your intuitive body movements. So yeah, the mechanics of riding this are weird and they're different from a traditional unicycle. On a traditional unicycle, you kind of use the torque between the two pedals yeah. to do twists and rotates. So you still turn with your hips and your shoulder. Well, that's how you do tricks. Uh, you you can, that's just how you steer, frankly. Right. But, but yeah, you can do tricks and all sorts of stuff. With this, the pedals are much lower than on a traditional unicycle and the seat's lower as well. On a traditional unicycle, I'd probably be standing up a, a fair amount higher. Um, you end up t swizzling at the hips is what I, I kind of think of it as. So you're turning on your hips and you're rocking from side to side to do gentle sweeping turns and get on the edge of the tire, just like you would with a bicycle or a motorcycle or something. And how but hard then to do turn? hard turns, Ooh. you kind of have to rock. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this I can is do not a 90 for... degree turn on a sidewalk, no okay. problem. All right. Uh, if there's a pole or something to grab onto, you can totally like Batmobile that shit and just swing, swing right around. Swing around it. Yeah. It's um, And you can carry stuff with it, which I was surprised by. A grocery bag. Um, I've carried a couple of bags. You have to kind of balance them so they're about the same. But you can, you can totally go back and forth uh, with a couple of grocery bags. A uh, messenger bag or a backpack on your back is no problem at all. You want to keep that centered on your center of gravity. Mm -hmm. Tights your um, body. You don't even have to tie, I don't even use the, like, the bike messenger strap, I just, right. I just let it rest. Uh, the place that you mess up is if you, A, you let the seat get a little crooked, which can happen, or if you end up taking off not straight, you'll, you'll veer out of control until you kind of straighten yourself out. Now, most importantly, what do other people think about it? Uh, the reaction has been mixed. Uh, I've had a lot of people stop me and ask questions. A lot yeah. of people think it's one of those things from, from China that's like the suitcase with the two wheels mm -hmm. that we tested at CES. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that this is much more rideable than those for what it's worth because it's much easier, like turning and things like that are much easier because you have the seat to work as leverage. Right? And this is not a first generation product. This is, this is like the fifth generation they've done for yeah. this. I mean, they've been, Adam has an early prototype hanging in his shop because he's a noted unicyclist apparently. I didn't know that. Um, the, uh, the new, this version is much easier to ride than, than the newer ones. He has one of these as well. And I think he's even used it on Mythbusters a couple of times. Um, it's, it's uh, people are curious. I had a homeless guy who yelled at me every time I went by him, threatened to stab me. This sounds right. I think right. that's normal. Yeah. You know, in San Francisco. Um, you know, it's not. It's not like the boosted board. It's not super practical, right? Um, it's a little heavier than the boosted board. It's a lot quieter than the boosted board. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that I would use this as like uh, going from Bart to the office, which is about half a mile, three quarters of a mile. So is this for sidewalk only or can you take this on a bike line? I, you know, the, the legality of where you ride is going to change based on where you are. I'm frankly afraid to ride it in the bike lane because it doesn't go fast enough. Mm. 12 and a half miles an hour, somebody on a racing bike is going to be really pissed at me clogging mm -hmm. up the bike lane. Um, and it does, when you reach that top speed, it starts to push back on you just like a Segway does. I've been riding on the sidewalks. Um, nobody's complained yet. I haven't gotten any tickets. Uh, I, you know, look up what your local municipality recommends before you ride. All right. And how much does it cost? Uh, it's $1,800. So it's very expensive if you're just going to buy something to noodle around with. Yeah. Um, I think if you want to actually get one of these, you have to be able to justify it by saying, hey, I'm going to not take the bus and pay $1.50 each way at the end of my commute. If I lived in the city, you know, someplace where, like, like where you do, mm -hmm. where you're seven miles, five miles from the office, I think you could probably ride this to work. I also think you probably take a fair amount of flack from the people around you. But it is, like, it's super fun. It's an interesting technological novelty. Uh, it's a Focus SBU. The Focus Designs SBU, $1,800. Um, you can buy it right now. Um, I think you should probably wear a helmet. I left mine in the car today. Absolutely. But, um, Be safe. Norm, you should ride. You want to learn how to ride? I'm going to take a, I'm going to try to learn how to ride, but thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Ah. Just commit and lean forward. Put your toes on the pedals. God damn it. Nope. Lean forward, come on. Ah. You just gotta commit, lean into it. Feel like you're gonna fall over forwards. There you go. Ah. Ah. There you go. 
Yep, that's the one. Nope, I'm done. 20 minutes a day, three days. Oh, oh it's so low. <laughs>